So as for you, I would say, and as my example of what I'm doing right now illustrates, is that acquiring this thing is contingent, depends on a certain structural pedagogy, a, a, a system in which I have been taught how to bring about the acquisition of this thing. If you don't have that educational background, you can never possess that thing. If you do have that educational background, you can possess that thing. Where two people have similar educational backgrounds, now we can talk about fair competition. Who's going to get there first? Who knows better? And so on and so on. Okay. So, hopefully we understand uh, that, right? So that's, that's another failure of the oppressor. The oppressor fails as... as um, fails in their attempt to humanize. They, they will never attempt to humanize because they specifically deny educational access um, to, to, um, to those who are oppressed simply because they recognize that insofar as they acquire this, this know-how, there's going to be competition over um, resources. Um, this idea of laziness, right, and this idea of incompetence is a little bit more dangerous because the argument then becomes that the oppressed group, right, their laziness and their incompetence makes them, makes the oppressed group jealous and envious of the oppressor, right? The fact that they're lazy, the fact they're incompetent, arguably, denies them access to acquiring objects in the world, which we know is false, right? The reason, but not, not for all, there are some people who are, you know, and Fourier is not saying that people, everybody wants to work hard. There are lazy people, there are incompetent people in the world, for sure. But as a, as a class of people, you cannot say that the entire class of oppressed people are all lazy, all incompetent. That's categorically false. The vast majority of the members of the oppressed class um, do not have, cannot acquire it because they don't have the know-how. There hasn't been anyone to give them this instruction. Why? Because this instruction costs a lot of money, right? Um, it is only when you acquire this instruction for free, like you're doing now, that you can actually sort of level the playing field. Well, because they're lazy, if the argument is that because they're lazy, right? So if I believe as the oppressor, if I believe as the oppressor that there are oppressed people there and that these people are lazy, um, then what I end up feeling is an envious, right? If, these, if the oppressed group is lazy and envious, then what do they do? Well, they're going to be jealous, right? They're going to be jealous. They're going to be uh, covetous, right? They're going to want what I have. They're going to be jealous not because of my work ethic or not because of my educational background, but they're going to be jealous over the things that I possess and they're going to want to take them from me. This makes, arguably, the oppressed group dangerous. So what we have on two levels now, one, we have the oppression of those who are oppressed right, because they've been denied educational access, like educational accessibility. Right? They don't believe that education is important or they're told that education is important. And on a quick side note, this is, this, is, um, this is categorically true in a contemporary setting. In the hip-hop community, uh, especially black males, young black males have, have been taught since I've been alive, right? So for the last 30-plus uh, years that, you know, if you, if you talk the way I talk and you're black and you're educated the way that I am because you're black, then you're a sellout, right? That, that you're trying to act white or you're trying to talk white. So that normative whiteness becomes, this idea of whiteness becomes... Um, relegated to just people who can, just people who are white can talk the way that I talk. Just people who are white can have the education that I have, which is categorically false because I talk the way that I talk and I have the education that I have and I'm not white, right? Nor do I want to be white. The point is, is that we have to, as members of our own community, members of the oppressed group, have to recognize that you're not selling out when you do what I do, right? When you do what I do, what you do is you open doors that you wouldn't otherwise have open to you. Um, and this is what Fourier is trying to um, convey, right? This message is what they're trying to convey. In doing that, however, what the oppressor is going to do is they're going to try to further demonize you as being lazy, as being incompetent, of being jealous, as, as being envious. And insofar as you as accept that, man, it's because I'm lazy, man, man, there aren't any opportunities for me, what ends up happening is that you pose a threat to them because now you... They say that you want to take from them what's naturally theirs, right? And then you have the good guy, bad guy, the cops and the robbers, and we know how that story goes, right? That story ends up with a whole bunch of people locked up in jail. That's how that story ends, right? Um, so with respect to the idea of incorporating laziness, envy into the discussion, not only do we dehumanize the, uh, the oppressed group, 
but we felonize the oppressed group, right? We say that not only are they, the oppressed group, dangerous, right? Not only are they non-human in a sense, not only do we dehumanize them, but insofar as they are jealous and they are covetous of what we have as oppressors, then we can felonize their behavior. We can criminalize them, right? They want to take what's mine. They want to take my life so that they can have what I have. And what do we do? We create institutions to keep them locked up, right? So uh, it's important to recognize sort of uh, how this, this, this process unfolds. The next bullet point, very important. Um, humanization, the act of making human, this act of recognition, humanization requires recognition. One, and recognition offers an opportunity to possess, right? Humanization requires recognition. And if I recognize you as being like I am, then you now have an opportunity to have something. This is oppressor sort of mentality. Insofar as you have an opportunity to have, insofar as you have an opportunity to, to possess, because I recognize you as a peer, right? And you can think about this, right? If we're now talking about two members of the oppressor class, and there is one object, and I'm running out of ink, and there's one object that is being uh, uh, competed over, then insofar as we have mutual recognition, right? Insofar as there's a mutual recognition, well, now we have to complete, compete for this object. We have to compete for the object because of mutual rec recognition. If you are an oppressed person and you are attempting to liberate yourself from a, oppression so that I recognize you, now there's another person to compete for this object, and I don't want to have to compete for that object. The more people competing over one object, the less likely it is for me to gain access to that thing. Right? So I want to keep you oppressed because insofar as you're oppressed, you're never going to have the know-how. You're never going to have the educational ability. You're never going to have the experience to be able to invent the new, the new Facebook or the new YouTube or the new MySpace or whatever. Right? Uh, I just want to keep you on it. Right? I don't want you to keep. I don't want you to start thinking about designing it because insofar as you think about designing it, there's competition for me, right? and I don't want that. Okay. Um, thus, the process of humanization, this liberation, this freedom, threatens material oppression. Right? This is false. But this is the ideology of the oppressor. The, the oppressor believes that insofar as the oppressed group attempts to gain this mutual recognition, if I recognize you as a peer, if you are no longer oppressed and I recognize you as a peer, then the object that's here, whatever that thing might be, we are both now going to compete for it and you might be able to outperform me. Insofar as you are able potentially to outperform me, then you could get the object and I might not get the object and I don't want that. So I'm going to keep you oppressed. That way I can have all the objects for myself. And that's the point, right? All of this oppression, all of this subjugation, all of this subordination is simply to preserve everything for myself. I want it for myself. Greed. It's an inability to share. It's an inability to recognize um, the fact that human beings mutually can have access to an object. And it's, no, I want it for myself. And I'm willing to oppress others to have as many of these things for myself as possible. And that's, that's, it's pretty simple, but that's what it boils down to. That's what it boils down to. Next point. The oppressor acts sadistically, right, by transforming the oppressed into a thing, right? So the oppressor acts sadistically. Freer says that the act of oppression, right, what the oppressor is doing by oppressing an individual is in a very real sense, taking pleasure in the oppression, taking pleasure in the suffering, taking pleasure in the objectification of another human being. Right? The whole reason that pleasure is had from this relationship is that insofar as, as, as they're fighting over foolishness, right? insofar as, um, insofar as um, I've demonized this population, well, look at all that I've gained. I've gained so much from oppressing them. right? So I actually take pleasure in the oppression of individuals, right? It becomes very, very sadistic. The act of oppression becomes an act of sadism, sadism, according to uh, Freire. Just a quick side note, anytime we're talking about sadism, um, there's a corresponding part to the sadist. So um, you have the sadist, the person who likes to inflict pain, the person who takes enjoyment in inflicting pain, and then you have the masochist, the, the person who likes to receive pain. Um, the categorization of the oppressed group as masochistic is a very, very complicated analysis. 
but I think Freer does a very good account in, in describing um, uh, how this unfolds, right? Um, Freer says, the oppressor consciousness destroys freedom and thus life um, is, and thus life in this act uh, of objectification. So, what, how does this work? 